You know, there are many reasons why myself and Mrs W love the month of April. Not least because it's a really productive month. You can... There's so many jobs that need to be done and it keeps you busy. But actually, is there any better sight than the blossom that comes at this time of the year? This happens to be the cherry blossom. We've got apple blossom, plum blossom. The gooseberry is gone now and is actually starting to form its berries. But it's just wonderful, isn't it, Mrs W, to see it. the blossom. Yeah, beautiful. We're also very lucky that we have the trees at the back of our plot are all wild cherries. So at this time of year when we get a little bit of a breeze, it looks like <laughs> confetti coming out of the sky. <laughs> Now, in today's video, we should be looking at all of the things that we've been doing over the weekend. Because of the jobs that didn't make it to Sunday's video. <laughs> it was such a lovely weekend. We were able to get so much done. Now the first thing I need to do is to be certainly clearing these. These are now starting to rise to flower. Is that the celery? The celery, yeah. It's so, lasted us so well though, hasn't it? We've yeah. put our roots into there, considering we dug it up from the garden and transplanted it in here in autumn. It's done very well. The smell of celery is amazing, Mrs W. I can imagine. Now this shan't go to waste because Mrs W is actually going to take any celery off it that we can and it shall actually be processed and then frozen. Just, it'll just help with um, stocks, when we make stocks and trivets, just to get the celery flavour into Yeah. There. It's not, it probably won't be suitable to eat now as a fresh veg, but... In fact, I don't think I'm going to twist that one out, Mrs W. Oh we only have to use the <laughs> knife and just cut it. At the base. It obviously likes where it is. <laughs> you can hear just how crunchy it is. Mm. Look at that. So some nice celery that we yep. can still use on that. Yeah, definitely. And that little experiment worked really well just to put that into here. Of course one of the things I didn't like was that we needed to dig a hole and disturb the soil. So this season what I'm going to do is is to sow some round about the end of May and then we'll plant this into here later in the season so that we have nice fresh plants that all we need to do is dib a hole to put into here. Now this spinach is just about had I think Mrs W? Yes, that has. That can feed the beast. While I'm in here we want some spring green for this afternoon, don't we? Yes please. That'll be the first lot we've tried, won't it? So. That's such clean healthy looking plants aren't they it's not a yeah. blemish on them and that really is the beauty of Lovely. growing here undercover and by the time we shred all this up that's going to be a wonderful vegetable that we can have later on today and my next job is i need to be planting out the zebrun shallots You can see I've already set some Zabrun shallots out and I have given them actually about eight inches between each plant. You don't necessarily have to leave them that much room but I've got the room here to do it 
And if you do give them the room, they get really quite large, don't they? Mm, yeah, that they really need one they? when you come to do your cooking. And then in between each row, I've left 12 inches, one foot, or 30 centimetres if you prefer new money. <laughs> So in between the carrots that we sowed, we've actually put a row of those zebrun as well. We had some left over, we might as well use the space. But the reason why I'm actually here for is to show you that the carrots, the Norwich carrot that we sowed last week in March, have all germinated. Good germination on those, isn't it? Very Lovely. good germination. Yeah. They're not too thick. So not a huge amount of thinning for us to do. No, that's the good. Hello, Poppy. The carrots are not ready to eat yet. But my next job is, is that I must pick some more purple sprouting broccoli. Purple sprouting broccoli is still going strong. Such great plants to have, really, because harvest over such a long time and of course at this time of the year there's actually very little for us to sort of be able to eat that we can pick fresh which is why we're growing the things that we are and some of this later on today with that lovely spring green that we just picked. Ooh, it's going to be lovely Mrs W. It certainly is. You can see if you don't keep on top of it it's oh, just yeah, going to go, go to, to flower. Yeah. yeah. So that's for the chickens that is Mrs W. <laughs> yep. Hello Bobby. I thought it was about time, after all this hard work we've been doing, that we reward ourselves. Oh, Mrs. And especially w. on a Sunday afternoon. Oh, what have we got here? Uh, these are some savoury muffins, uh, spinach, cheese and onion muffins. And they, they were going to be the March Veg of the Month recipe, but obviously you weren't very well, so we never got around to filming it, did we? So no. spinach was going to be the Veg of the Month, and this was going to be the recipe. But... Um, I have secretly just tried one indoors and they're very nice. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be lovely. I like the look of that beer as well. This one's I not thought... going to the slugs. <laughs> no, absolutely not. You can allow this one. <laughs> Do you like it? Mm. Oh, that's all right then. <laughs> I can taste uh, spinach. Yeah. And I can taste, uh, there's a bit of heat there. Put chili I, I, put, I put a frozen, yeah, I chopped up one of our frozen chillies from last year, popped that in. There's a hint of onion there too. Yeah, spring onion. Just the sort of like the green stalky bits of three spring onions. Mm. A little that's... bit of garlic. <laughs> Cheddar cheese. Cheddar cheese, that's yeah. a lovely muffin that is. Yeah, good. Feel nice and refreshed now, Mrs. W. Good. <laughs> nice glass of beer and... A nice muffin, hey? Hey? You did get a bit in the end, didn't you, hey? <laughs> what I want to do now is to plant some onions. And these are a bit different. These onions are globu onions. We've never grown them before. And there's two reasons I want to do it. One is because we've never grown them before. They're supposed to get quite large onions. So I'm kind of thinking that if we multi-sow those and leave them in fours and fives, we might get slightly larger onions. And I need to see what they taste like. But also, myself and Mrs W fancied entering the local show this year. <laughs> so we thought, yep, yeah, we'll see if we can grow some large onions. And I've set some quite wide spacings for them. They've got about 12 inches by 12 inches. So hopefully they shall produce some very large onions. 
Now what we did want to do is leave these as long as possible to get as established as they can. Because if I'm going to enter something, I like to try and win. <laughs> and actually, Mrs W, look, if you can get the camera in there, already beginning to bulb. Oh, let me see. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Nice root system. They're ready to go in, aren't they? Oh, yes. So, in they're going to go into their hole. So, as I said, I've deliberately done some as singles, because I want to grow large onions, and I've also done some multi-sown, just so that we can see how they grow. So wish us luck, <laughs> and we shall bring you the results a bit later on this year. Late August, I think, is when the Freethorpe uh, show is. Show is, yet. It? So it is yet. we'll see how we go then. Now those globu onions that we put in there were actually sown and potted on into the Dalefoot compost mix. I have to say they look really healthy don't they Mrs. They Dalefoot? do, yeah. yeah. But next I need to be planting the brassicas and the greens that we shall be eating during the month of July. So I'm going to start with the calabrese. You can see they've developed a really lovely root system. Oh, that's good, yeah. It's got its first true leaf. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly the sort of stage that I like to plant those into the ground. What we are doing is mirroring exactly what's in this row and next will be the cabbage providence and then lastly we need a couple of cauliflowers which are once again the skipper and I know a lot of people always ask me if you're only going to be planting two or three, why do you grow so many? Well, it is to try and balance, get the balance between the plants and the slugs. Should any of these get eaten, I've still got some plants that we can pop into the ground and replace them with. Now in this little strip here, I'm going to plant the coal rabbi. And actually next door here will be the red cabbages where they will go that we sowed. Uh, I think it was the last video, wasn't it? Yes. Now I sowed five coal rabbi. Four look really good. One of them, I don't know if it's the compost, but it seems to have stopped it from coming through. I'm going to plant it anyway, just to see what happens. And on this occasion, I've deliberately only sown five because I want a bit of continuity. So I'm going to plant those five in here and then on the next sow with us, I shall sow some more coal rabbi and those five will then go in the rest of the row. Because if you do get too big coal rabbi, you'll find that they'll go a bit woody. So it's better to harvest them when they're young and enjoy them like that. I thought you were getting those for me, Poppy. <laughs> You'll never save my she's legs, will you? Back. Oh, she's going to sit at the gateway, so you can't get through <laughs> without her knowing. <laughs> she's the gatekeeper. <laughs> so you can see, this one seems to have stopped coming through. I'm just going to try and move the compost away, and hopefully that will get away. The other four, looking really good. We've got the second leaf. That's appeared. So... We've got a lovely root system to let us get those in the ground, Mrs. W. Mm, yeah, brilliant. As I said in our tips for April, there are many jobs to do during April. One of the ones that we needed to do was to get this all pruned back. This is a summer jasmine flowering jasmine. Mm -hmm. 
we have a firethorn or pyrocanther and they just got so big and if you're a regular follower of our channel you'll know that I was a bit disappointed with the celeriac that we grew here and I think it might be the roots and things that are probably taking more of the moisture could also be the variety because I did mention that too and we're trying a different variety this year but more than anything we need light to come onto this plot so it's all being cut back you can see <laughs> All of this in this builder sack. Ready for the shredder. Ready for the shredder. And you should become some black gold <laughs> to feed this impoverished piece of soil. <laughs> now you'll probably remember that uh, when we had the storms during February, well actually early January and February, we had some quite prolific storms, didn't we? Mm. All of the roof of the compost bays got torn to shreds. But Mrs. W has done her best <laughs> and she's recovered it for me. Even doubling down, we've got some pieces Patterns of wood, of wood holding, it in. <laughs> holding it in there. Same on the underneath side. So now I have compost bays that won't let the water in. And it's something we've been meaning to do for quite some time. We've got guttering on the polytunnel that feeds into the water butts at the back there. We hadn't done anything with a shed, which seemed quite a shame. So Mrs W has attached some guttering to this shed and now that water can pour down into there, we can dip the watering can in and it's just another watering point. Now, as I said in the last video that went out on Sunday, I mow the lawns every week and I top the composters up. So here are the grass clippings from this week. That's going to provide plenty of nice nitrogen. This is some bits and pieces that weren't any good and that have gone into the recycling. And I've got another tub that Mrs W has saved <laughs> for me. And when you think that uh, the eggshell's in here, when we emptied it on Sunday's video, no evidence of any eggshells was there. I think as long as you sort of crush them up before you put them in, they, yeah. they usually disappear into it quite easily, don't they? Yeah. So not only are the chickens providing eggs, but also <laughs> are providing material for the composter. And remember I do this every week. So by the time we get to this coming Saturday I shall empty what's in the bottom there that you saw drop down in the last video. And the last job for today is to get these strawberries covered. We don't want the birds taking the strawberries once they form and as you can see they are starting to flower but equally when we let the chickens out I don't want them getting the strawberries either. <laughs> They're one of my favourite crops and certainly the grandchildren's. Oh yes. If the chickens got those and they didn't get any well there would be real trouble wouldn't there Mrs <laughs> W. I'm going to finish this and peg it down. Do let us know in the comments what you've been up to. It's been a fantastic weekend and hopefully it has for most of you here in the UK. Certainly it should have been down in the south. So let us know what you've been up to and what's your... Poppy, you're getting your paws caught, dear. <laughs> over here. Come over here. Good girl. It's not the kind of cover that's going to keep you warm. It's bird netting, Poppy. Bird netting. <laughs> anyway, she's not going to leave us alone. So have a great gardening week, won't you all? And we, we shall see you back here in our new dig Norfolk garden on Sunday. Bye.